Guys, I'm getting bent up by mosquitoes out here just waiting for these fucking sirens and dogs to stop barking. All right, guys, I got the XH2 again. I rushed out yesterday to go get this. Shout out to Austin for looking out on me on this. Yesterday, I already tested the dynamic range and video against the XH2S, which I'm filming on right now. Uh, the XH2S just beat this thing's ass when it comes to video, especially in 60 frames per second. But yeah, I mean, I could ramble on forever about that. This video is about photo resolution. Since 60 frames per second doesn't look that great on here in comparison to the S, I'm now contemplating if I still want this camera. If the resolution and the photo quality, the skin tones, colors, if for some reason this looks better, I will keep this camera in the S. Uh, but before we jump into the comparison, I just wanna talk about autofocus and one thing on top of that, which everyone keeps asking if I'm getting rid of my R5 or R5C, I am getting rid of my R5 because my R5C is my workhorse. Fujifilm cameras are what like makes me excited uh, to shoot personal work. It's just more fun. Autofocus, they're very similar. Uh, the X-H2S is very confident in the way that all focus to where it gets whatever point you're trying to focus on and it just, it's sticky. This guy's very similar, but it does go feel like it's like kind of pumping. It's weird. It's really hard for me to explain it, but it stays on the subject, but it's it goes back and forth a lot. So I don't really know what that's about. Maybe it's a small like firmware issue, but it's still really good though. From what I saw from the back of the viewfinder, uh, it still was nailing everything. It was just the characteristics of it was a little bit, it was a little more insecure, I guess you can say, than the uh, against the S. So, but yeah, it did just fine. Like I would be totally comfortable still using this uh like as my sole camera for photos but, but yeah now with all that said let's go and look at the actual comparison again guys just to sum this up as quick as possible before we go over these because i've already looked all over these tenfold if you do anything video related just get the xh2s if you strictly just do photos and you do not care about video just get the xh2 either way you're going to be solid these are the safest images here because i shot them at 2.8 on a 23 millimeter wr the latest prime which is set to work with the new X-H2 sensor, both at 16 ISO. So this is a good way to test low light plus sharpness, dynamic range, all that stuff. So let's just punch in here. This is the X-H2 up here and the X-H2S down here. You can see all we're pretty much getting here from the X-H2 is more ability to punch in. And there's a tiny bit more details. You can see kind of her eyelashes a little bit better on here. And on the X-2S, you can see the eyelashes, but there's not as much detail on them, but again, we're punching a hundred percent here. So if you're someone that needs to do heavy cropping, obviously the X-H2 is going to be it, but punched out, they look exactly the same. Let's look at the noise real quick on the X-H2S noise performance looks a little bit better, but the X-H2 is definitely holding up pretty damn well for it being 40 megapixels. So let's get into the portraits here. This is the older 56 1.2. This is the S down here and just the two up here. See on the S looks a bit brighter because there was a little bit of light uh, flaring into there. So ignore that, but let's punch in once again. And you see the X-H2s uh, at its base 125 ISO and the S is at its 160 ISO. You see the details look very similar. It's just on the X-H2, we could punch in a little bit more. Let's look at the rim of his hat. You can see where the rim stitched on. Uh, you can see the stitches just a tiny bit more versus on the, on the S kind of blends in a little bit better, but you can still see that there's a stitch or a line there. If you were to shoot the GFX, all that detail would be there. So anyone who's thinking that uh, H2 is gonna replace the GFX, immediately this is your answer, it's not. Now this was shot on the 23 millimeter wide open. Uh, the settings are different on this one. You see uh, the XH2 is at one over 400 and the uh, S is at one over 500. I'll go to the next frame here in a second just to show you, but just to show you sharpness, uh, the X-H2S, you see all the little details in his hat band up here. And on the H2, you can see a little bit more finer details in the rim here. On the GFX, once again, you would see all of that. But on like facial hair wise and all that, uh, again, on the H2, there's just a tiny bit more detail. Now the settings are matched up here. So let me just zoom in so it fills the screen. So that's our highlights recovered. You see, they look very similar. There's not a big difference. Now let's recover our shadows here. Uh, once again, they look pretty dang similar. So I guess that's a good sign. Dynamic range isn't that big of a thing. On these ones, I have edits on these. You can find the same exact curve presets uh, in my uh, presets on my website. Obviously it's the H2 at 125 ISO and the S at 160 ISO. They look pretty similar, one over 100th on the shutter 
at 140 millimeters. So there's some motion blur in here. So this just goes to show if you mess up your shots, uh, they're both gonna look equally bad. I just wanna show you why the X-H2 is so much better for photos, uh, in my opinion. First off, uh, one of the most exciting things for me, I have a custom button set to where I go in here and you can see I could change the crop modes uh, which really helps when I'm trying to frame, especially when I love shooting medium format. Um, I have it just on small because I'm actually not going to use the JPEGs for anything. But you see we get 3 by 2 16 by 9 one by one but here's the new additions, four by three, which is the GFX media format crop ratio, and then five by four, which is the Instagram crop ratio. So if I'm shooting models, I could put this vertical and I could get accurate framing, which uh, any of us who are working, I would say majority of us most likely are just shooting stuff for social media. And so just having that and camera just makes life way easier. And again, just to get that media format look, I just like shooting four by three. My eye sees that way and I'm shooting photos. All right, sorry for the informal uh, iPhone video, but just to sum up the end of this video, if you're wondering if you need to get the X-H2S or the X-H2, it's literally this simple. The photos look great on both of them, but if you're someone that's more focused on photos, uh, get the X-H2. If you're someone that needs anything video related, get the X-H2S. It's literally that simple. It doesn't need to be overthought. Personally for me and the work that I do, I get booked for way more video work these days. So uh, the X-H2S is going to fit into my kit perfectly. When I do shoot photo work, uh, it tends to be bigger campaigns. And so I personally need higher resolution cameras for that because they're printing giant prints in store. They're doing crazy crops and putting branding on it and all that. So just giving the client extra resolution for that just helps out a lot because it just gives them more file to work with basically. Uh, but again, if they're just gonna do social media work out of it, uh, the X-H2S, OS files are going to be perfectly fine. And then regarding the GFX, I freaking, I am in love with that system, just the way that the files come out, the photos come out, quality of the glass, just everything. So I will most likely still get that. But again, I don't book too much photo work these days. So uh, I'm probably just going to get the older one just to hold me over until something new comes out that can hold up to full frame performance. So that's another video though. That's it.